I just want to talk a little bit about miking the kit. Uh, I use, of course, all Audix microphones. Uh, I endorse Audix microphones, and I'm a huge fan. I think they sound fantastic. They are just perfectly, you know, uh, constructed, you know, for drum recording, and they are. Uh, they already have the right dip in EQs and everything like uh, at, uh, at 500 uh, hertz and so on So you just stick them on the drum and they sound great already And then it's just a m minor amount of tweaking to get them to sound absolutely incredible. So I love Audix mics um, And I use a combination of stands and clips on the kit clips of course uh, being useful because they don't take up so much floor space, you know. If you clip a microphone onto a, a, a rim like the two toms, you don't need additional stands, which gives you a little more floor space for other stands uh, or for pedals or, of course, your tripods from the drum set. So clips are useful, but, you know, clips also transfer vibration onto the microphone. So if, if you're hitting a rim, for example, or if you are hitting the drum that is uh, mounted on the same stand, you get a little bit of sort of vibration bleed you know into uh, the other microphone which is not always ideal but I don't mind that I don't mind sympathetic ring I don't mind sort of uh, bleed and um, and a little bit of cross fertilization on the whole uh, drum set because I see the kit as one whole instrument not sort of a combination of individual components you know so I like uh, the kit to sound beautiful as a whole um, so in this case, I use a combination of clips on the toms and and boom stands to mount the mics and uh, I'll just show you um, I have the stands all very Stable on the ground. I extend even the the main uh, rod all the way down So it gives me additional support. I have all the, the, the cables neatly tucked away um, from the 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 drum stands and the other boom stands are they're not in the way um, and what's very very important when you have a studio uh, is to keep everything really simple and organized and that includes all your cable you know pasta salad uh, so I run all the wires and cables into one here which goes to my uh, preamps and desk so it's one fat snake but I can't actually use a snake because I do change things over all the time I do need individual leads to everything and not everything in one snake because uh, I also I often change the mic position so sometimes I'll use a room mic in that corner sometimes I use the same mic in that corner so I have to be able to take that one lead out of my snake basically and run it a different way in the room but I keep everything very very tightly uh, organized in this snake including my headphone lines and monitor lines. Um, also what's important to me personally is to mark my stands uh, because of the type of stands and because of the clips that are on the stands because every mic is, needs a different clip. You know, a hyper, you know, cardioid condenser like the uh, overhead mics here, they use different clips than for example my snare drum or core mic here. So I mark them here for example as snare top or here snare bottom Every stand is marked here, overhead right, for example, here right, everything's marked. So not only will I know which stand goes on which side of the kit, but also they usually have the right clips on them for the microphones. And uh, also the, the cables are already clipped onto the stand. So even when I switch microphones, I know that cable will still go to the right channel on my desk. So everything's marked also here overhead left, for example, the cable, the stand, all the clips and everything so this keeps it simple and um, and it, it keeps you from wasting time when I switch microphones you know so because I'll know everything will still arrive at the same place at the desk and when I move things around it's easy to move things back and rewire things and so on and so forth um, this mic for example is interesting the the way I mic my kit is pretty much standard you know and I've learned a few tricks from people over the years um, the, the way I mic, for example, most of my Tom Toms is, of course, um, I have, uh, this is close miking technique, and, you know, what matters is that the mic microphone points pretty much at the center of the drum head from where it is. Not necessarily at the rim like that. You get too many overtones. It's important that it points at the center of the drum head, that it's not too close, that you get a nice ambient sound even when it's close miking. So, 
that's what I do. I, I mount the mic so they're out of the way of anything that's moving near them, like this splash cymbal, for example. They're not uh, in the way of any moving parts. And of course, they're tucked away so I don't hit them when I play. That's also very important. Uh, other than that, they point at the center of the drum at about a 45 degree angle. And um, I have the bass drum mic internally with I actually, the bass drum has five mics on it right now, and you may think that's a little too much, but for me, it's it's very useful because I have a sort of a, a session template in my computer with all the channels active, and I always record all the channels, including five bass drum mics, for every recording I do. That doesn't mean that I use all five of them, but I don't have to experiment with moving mics and cables and things around and stands around. I record five different microphones every single time, and then I listen to the one microphone I like the best for that particular track, and I mute the others. Or I use a combination of different microphones. So that's why I have two mics internally, and now, and uh, oh, in this case, I have four microphones now and two external mics, and I have a separate core mic on the outside here. For example, this is actually a Tom mic I'm using. This is a D4. No, it's a D2 Tom mic. Um, I've got a D2, uh, D6 uh, on the inside. Uh, I've got a f uh, 414 in the outside with a large membrane on the outside uh, and I have a 421 on the inside also. So I can dial up a nice combination of all these microphones for a more punchy you know, kick drum sound or for a really nice round kick drum sound, a more ambient sound. I just uh, you know, listen to a combination of, of different microphones uh, when I uh, listen back to the recording and find what matches the song best. This microphone here is what's considered a core microphone. A core mic is, um, in this case, it's an Audix i5. Um, a core mic basically captures th the sound of the kit in the middle of the kit, usually placed somewhere between uh, bass drum and snare drum. In this case, I have it sort of pointing right between bass drum and snare drum. It captures the whole close ambient sound of the drum set that is quite uh, sort of kick and snare heavy and you can compress that um, and or distort it whatever and you get a really really interesting sort of a close ambient ambient sound out of that microphone. Uh, this is a very important sort of close ambient mic that I like to use along with other room microphones um, that are further away from the kit. Of course I use the ADX51 uh, snare drum uh, hi-hat microphone here, hypercardioid condenser mic. I use another one of those over here to pick up my right hi-hat and the right cymbal from underneath. This is a great also an ADX51. Here on, on top um, I use uh, these two, um, they're SCX125A Audix uh, condenser microphones as overheads. Uh, I use all D2 Audix on the Tom Toms, D4 Audix on the uh, floor toms. I use a I5 on the snare drum and uh, various combinations of microphones uh, on the bottom of the snare drum. In this case, I have the vintage uh, 414 actually down there right now, I believe. And um, uh, what else do I use? I have, of course, also a room mic, which is here. This is a beautiful CX-112 Audix, as you can hear. Um, and this captures a bit of uh, ambience. This is a very dry room um, and it's carpeted and it's got all sorts of weird angles and nooks and crannies here so it's uh, fairly dry and has a completely diffused reflection um, which is great because you get a very clean signal and, uh, and I can work with that easily if I wanted to add more ambience or more reverb or whatever I can of course do that digitally. But this microphone gives me just enough sort of room ambience to get you know the sense of space, um, and I can move that either further away or closer, 
depending on you know which type of sound I want or sometimes I bring it really close on top of the kit right here you know get a more uh, sort of direct sound with less delay between the close miking and the room or what I also do alternatively sometimes if you look down there there's a window and this window goes into my garage it's really messy right now you can see drum racks down there and all sorts of debris because I'm having something renovated <laughs> you can see there's a whole lot of trash but not only uh, does it look trashy right now it sounds trashy too so what I do sometimes uh, is I take some ambience mics and I put them in a garage and all I do is then open this window and of course I record now the ambience from my garage so I'm playing drums here the sound travels through this room out in the garage and I'm recording the sound in the garage with expensive microphones. That gives you a really sort of that uh, dirty, trashy garage type sound. And of course, more distance for the sound to travel. So more ambience, you know, and a, and a larger, a sense of a larger room. Uh, sometimes I also put the, the mics down at the bottom of the staircase and I experiment with different mic positions in different corners, because some corners of this room have more low frequency than others. I have to cancel that. Oh, it's probably important. I may have to take that. <laughs> So um, this is my little home studio. I hope you enjoyed the trip and the little tour. Uh, it's very warm because I've got the lights on and I'm playing the drums and we're in California. It's always warm here, which is awesome because that's why we're here. Um, and um, we like our drums loud. We like them fast. We like them dominant in the mix. and. Uh, we like it warm in our studios. So uh, it's good for a back, it keeps our muscles supple and keeps us limber, you know? Um, and there it is. Again, thank you for joining me on my little tour of my studio and uh, I'll see you guys around. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.